Hi folks, Ben Affleck here. Uh, this pre-calculus lesson is on piecewise functions and greatest integer functions. This is probably one you want to watch a couple of times just to get especially um, uh, the greatest integer function just to see it's something brand new. So this is your brand new stuff. But first let's go ahead and do this board problem here. A little bit of algebra review, factor and then solve and then solve. Okay, so go ahead and pause it, work these out and then you can check the solutions here. All right, here's the solutions. That's what I got right there. Uh, this one, the only thing you can do is GCF out of 2x, and, and this doesn't factor anymore. If it did, I would try it. But if you multiply 2 times 3 is 6, there's no factors of 6 that add to negative 4, so it stops right there. Okay, here, uh, x is less than or equal to negative 9. Don't forget, when you divide by a negative, it flips the inequality. This one doesn't factor, so I used the quadratic formula. If you were in my class, I would prefer this answer with the radical, 5 plus or minus the square root of 13 all over 6. Um, uh, but it depends on, you know, uh, what book you're using. They might give you decimal answers. So so this is this one is 5 plus the square root of 13, which is like 3.6 something divided by 6. And then this one here is 5 minus the square root of 13 divided by 6. All right, so piecewise and greatest integer functions. Here we go. Okay, so here's a piecewise function, you guys. This says uh, we're going to graph this is y equals 2 when it, x is less than 0. This is y equals x plus 1 when x is between 0 and 2. Then this is y equals negative 2x when x is greater than or equal to 2. All right, so let's go ahead and graph that. Let's graph y equals 2. That's a horizontal line, you guys. And when x is less than negative 2, x is to the left and to the right. And when I'm less than uh, 0, sorry, when it's less than 0, um, it's going to the left. So there's y equals 2 going to the left. Okay, now I'm going to graph y equals x plus 1. Okay, so if I go up to plus 1 and then use my slope, up 1 over 1, and then it's going to be a line that goes right up through here. Okay, and it's going to be between 0 and 2, so open circles on 0 and 2, and there you go. Okay, and then uh, y equals negative 2x. Okay, now you can think of uh, y equals negative 2x plus 0, then use your slope. But what I did, you guys, is I plugged in, uh, since it starts at x equals 2, plug in 2 right here, and you get y equals negative 2 times 2, which is negative 4. Okay, and then use your slope. So it's a closed circle because it's greater than or equal to. Then use your slope down 2 to the right 1. And so there it is. That's a piecewise function. This is, see how it's all in different little pieces right here? That's why it's called a piecewise function. Okay, let's try another one. I know you guys had fun with that. Okay, so I'm going to graph uh, y equals negative 1 when x is less than or equal to negative 3. There it is. I'm going to graph y equals 1 plus x. I changed it to x plus 1. And what I did on this one, you guys, is I plugged in negative 2 right here. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So I went over 2, down 1. It was an open circle because there wasn't an equals bar right there. Then I plugged in uh, x equals 2 right there. 2 plus 1 is 3. So I went over 2, up 3, and it's a closed circle because it's that right there. Okay, now I'm going to graph, uh, whoops, I'm going to graph uh, y equals 2x, okay, when x is greater than 4. All right, I had to kind of go up here. I ran off a little bit on my chart. When x is equal to 4, 2 times 4 is 8, so I went over 4, up 8, and then I used my slope up 2 to the right 1, so it gave me that line right there. Okay, I just kind of ran off my, my chart right there. All right, okay, so you don't have to write this down if you're in my class. This is just a um, know what's a piecewise function, whether it's not connected or whether it's connected. Okay, so can you see this piecewise function? Like the two we just did was a piecewise function not connected. Here's a piecewise function that's connected at every piece. It doesn't jump anywhere. All right, so, all right. Uh, okay, so uh, absolute values. Okay, this is from Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. Remember, if we plugged in absolute values of negative 3, then it's positive 3. So if I go to the left 3, up 3, it gets me that one. Negative 2, positive 2. Um, and then, uh, let's see. And then, uh, it, so there, so it's, it's a V-shaped graph. So those always graph uh, V-shaped graphs when they're going... Um, absolute values. Okay, so here's another one here. Well, y equals x minus 1. I went ahead and graphed, uh, I did the negative 3 through positive 3 for my x's, and negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4, but the absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4. So to the left, 3, up 4. All right, and then to the left, 2, up 3, and so on, and so on, and so on. So all that did, can you see? This minus 1, it just shifted my v over one unit to the right. It's the same graph as this guy right here, Okay, where it's going uh, from 0, 0, but that minus 1 inside the parentheses just shifted that v over to the right. 
Okay, when I see something like this, it's going to flip. This negative is going to flip the V upside down. And since this negative 3 is on the outside, what that's going to do is it's going to start my vertex right here. And then just it gets flipped upside down. So uh, there it is right there. Okay, that minus 3. And the, and the negative made it reflect uh, upside down right there. All right, okay, this one right here. My vertex is going to be shifted to the left 1 and down 2. I always tell my kids opposite with the X and same out here. So left 1, down 2. And instead of going, um, and it's going up because it's positive, but instead of going over 1, up 1, this 2 is make it going to go over 1, up 2. So it's going to make it a skinnier 1, over 1, up 2. Okay, if it was one third, then I go over one up a third. If that was one third right there, it would make it a much wider one. Okay, all right, let's try uh, greatest integer. Okay, so this symbol right here means it's the greatest integer uh, that's not greater than or equal to x. I know what you're thinking, what, what the heck, but um, uh, or it's the greatest integer less than or equal to x. That's how I like to think about that, you guys. So, for example, um, the greatest integer less than or equal to 8.9 is 8. Okay, the greatest integer that's less than or equal to. Okay, um, uh, and so if I did uh, the greatest integer less than or equal to 7.001, just think of a number line. It's always the integer to the left of the number line, so it's equal to 7. Okay, greatest integer less than or equal to 5 is just 5. Okay, the greatest integer less than or equal to negative 3.9. Remember the number line, and it's the integer to the left. To the left is negative 4. All right, so let's go, go ahead and graph these guys, okay? This is kind of something new. You haven't seen this yet. So uh, I set up a T-chart, you guys, and hopefully you can see what's happening here. So the greatest integer less than or equal to negative 1.9 is negative 2. You guys with me? I hope so. Less than or equal to negative 1.5 is still negative 2. Less than or equal to negative 1.1 is still negative 2. It won't change until I get to the next integer. The integer less than or equal to negative 1, less than or equal to, is negative 1. Okay? Negative 1. Negative 1. It won't change until I get to the next integer. 0, 0, 0. Even 0, as close as I can get to 1 at 0, it won't change until I get to the next integer. All right, so what's happening here when I graph these guys is this, you guys. Here's negative 1.9 right here. X equals negative 1.9. Y equals negative 2. If I did negative 2 right there, the greatest integer less than or equal to negative 2 would be that one. And it stayed at negative 2 at negative 1.5, negative 1.4, negative 1.3. It was always negative 2, negative 2, negative 2, negative 2. And it changed right there when x became negative 1. It became actually negative 1. So that's why I have a solid circle at negative 1 right there. Okay, so this purple is this purple right here. All right, so, um, and this blue right here is this blue guy right here. So um, what happened is uh, it won't change until I get to the next integer at zero. So at zero, it became zero, so it was solid at zero here, and it was open right there. All right, and it stays zero, stays zero, stays zero until I get to one, and it all of a sudden jumps right there. And it makes a stepping stone, and it just keeps following that pattern all the way up, and you get a graph that looks like that. Ain't that a beauty? Boy, I like that one. Looks like a Christmas tree ornament. Look at that, just twirling around on your on your Christmas tree. Or your holiday tree, sorry. Okay, let's try this one here. Okay, the greatest integer, and it's negative. So I'm going to do the negative of all this stuff, of x plus 1. So what I did is I did another t-chart right there. And I plugged in, okay, and I worked it all out right here. Negative 1.9, okay? Negative 1.9 plus 1 is negative 0.9. And the greatest integer that's less than or equal to negative 0.9 is negative 1. But this negative says it's negative negative 1, so it's positive 1. You guys with me? Woohoo, this is fun. Okay, when I do uh, negative 8, I get 1. When I do negative 1.3, I get 1 and 1. It won't change until I get to negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. And the, and the greatest integer less than or equal to 0 is 0. And negative 0 is still 0. Okay, so I get 0 again, and you can see I worked it out again. I get, I get 0, 0, and it won't change till I get to the next integer. And don't forget, when I plug in, let's plug in 0. 0 plus 1 is, is 1. Greatest integer less than or equal to 1 is 1, but it's negative 1, so this is negative. When I plugged in 0.1, 0.1 plus 1 
point 0.1 plus 1 is 1.1. 1 .1. The greatest integer less than or equal to that is 1, and it's negative that. So I get that. So you'll see the graph of this blue stuff, the purple stuff, the red stuff, and you'll see the, the black dot right there for that guy right here. Okay, there it is right there. Kind of study it, you guys. Take some time and study that, and then finish it up. And you'll probably want to check that out again. I know my kids wanted to see this lesson. And I'll do another part of this, 1.7b. Uh, All right. And then if you're in my class, that would be your homework.